Hi and welcome to our channel. I'm Andy, this is Julie, and if you're new here, um, we have taken a year sabbatical to travel the world and abroad, and we've just finished our first six months, and mm -hmm. we've just returned from eight weeks in France. So, uh, this video is about the last four weeks, and we spent the last four weeks in the Lot, which is again in the southwestern part of France. We had a fabulous time. We stayed in a wonderful gîte. We did, fantastic. Had, got the drone out for that and visited some amazing places. But also, uh, Andy came back to the UK for a boys' trip. Sailing. Yes, so you can't tell you too much about that. Um, and I had the girls over to help celebrate Abby's birthday. So I hope you enjoy the video. Bye. Bye. So we've moved now to Chez Lily, which is in a small village called Fresina Le Gela. It's about 45 minutes from Abby, Luca and Mia. It's a three bedroom sheet. And it's got a wonderful pool. And we've had such a glorious time here. Um, they're our neighbours and owners of the Gite, Lily and René, have been absolutely fabulous. The garden extends right down to the bottom um, and Lily has always wanted us to um, um, pick any of the vegetables in the garden, um, from lettuces to raspberries to strawberries, very generous. And from the doorstop you can walk right up into the woods right down to the village, uh, or just around the woods, um, and also walk down to the Plan d'Eau. Um, and here are some pictures of the Plan d'Eau. Um, it's a small lake with a restaurant that opens from mid-June until September, uh, open every day of the week by Wednesday. So very easy. Today we're in the, at the Gouffre de Padirac, which is an incredible underground adventure. Uh, Andy's got his listening device in. I do, yeah. So I think I'm listening to the tour. I'm actually listening to uh, cricket commentary. The panoramic escalator or walking down the steps. And we are walking down the steps. So we're listening now uh, to an audio tape in English. You can have it in any language, actually. The Gouffre de Padirac is a spectacular natural, natural chasm. This remarkable cave system features a 103 metre deep entrance shaft that opens into a vast underground world. Visitors can explore its crystal clear subterranean rivers and lakes. Uh, we've just been on this boat here, which is a bit like a pond, <coughs> through 500 metres of a little river. So this is an underground lake. Lake Superior. This was an outstanding visit. There was a lot of steps, but there is a good lift system. Well worth a visit. So an early start took us um, a two and a half drive all the way up to Limoges Airport where I dropped Andy off as he was off for a weekend with the boys sailing in the UK. Safe trip! Safe trip <laughs> to you to drive safely back and have a great time. So I've dropped Andy off at the airport um, and I'm now going back through Limoges. Um, I have to say I'm a tad nervous. I haven't done a lot of driving in France uh, and certainly not in towns and you have to go through Limoges. Um, so anyway, I'll keep you updated. So we've just stopped at an air so that Teddy can get out and have a run around. Managed to get out of Limoges fairly easily, so that's good. So I'm just waiting for the girls to arrive at Breve Airport. I've got here a bit early, so I've just found this spot here um, that's uh, quiet. Teddy can have a, a walk about um, before I go and get them. Very exciting now. Just landed, on time, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. <laughs> here we go. They've arrived. The girls are here drinking Yorkshire tea. I do hope they're going to drink the rosé that I've bought. Morning. Morning and happy birthday, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, cheers everybody. It's really well. <laughs> happy birthday, dear Abby. Happy birthday to you. Woo and all good.
good things have to come to an end and at 6am the girls set off back to Breve Airport. Happily, Ruth took them back as it was en route home um, to Guzon and Chefieu. Cost of travel. First there was a Ryanair flight which was only 18 euros, a five mile taxi ride which was 15 pounds a train, from East Midlands to Wellingborough was £25 and then another um, taxi journey um, to Northampton, 12 miles, was also £25. What an amazing tour, but also fantastic to be back in France. Once the girls had left, Mia and I were feeling a bit flat, so we went to explore the local market in Kazan. Fresh strawberries, food to eat on the go, textiles, scarves, bags and beer. And Mia and I did have to spoil each other a little bit. While Andy was away, Lily, who, run, who owns our Gite, um, invited me to go looking for Girol mushrooms. This is the first time I've ever been foraging for mushrooms and it was not an easy task. <laughs> voilà. But the weather did improve, so there was lots of time in the pool. Abby and Mia came to stay, and we had lots of fun and lots of silliness. Today we are going around a walk around a tiny little village called Les Arc, which is also home to a sculptor. Nice place, isn't it? Really nice place. Um, Les Arc. Can't see any Alps or skiing anywhere. The village is also home to the Zadkain Museum, dedicated to the works of the renowned sculptor Osip Zadkain. The museum, housed in Zadkain's former residence and studio, showcases an impressive collection of his sculptures, drawings and personal artefacts. However, the main reason for our visit to Les Arcs today was to do a circular walk, 4.6 kilometres. We were following these rather strange posts. Yeah, off we go then. We're at this little called Petit Place and we're having an ice cream. Hello Mia, it's very cute. No rain today. No rain today, yeah. So here we are approaching Rocamador, a stunning medieval village perched on a cliffside. It is renowned for its dramatic setting with buildings rising in tiers above the Alzu River Gorge. We've parked free uh, oh. below, uh, so you can see up there, right up there, that's where we're going. Hello! Teddy's with us, yet again, managing the steps. So we've 
we are just sitting and having a coffee and a croissant and deciding the route that we're going to take as we wander around the Commodore. We have a English guide from the tourist office. We're at the top of the um, ridge that leads to um, the town or the citadel. There is an alternative route from below, which is the one that where, where we park. So there are seven gates uh, to Rocamador that you will pass through as you go on your walking tour. And these gates take you down to um, the centre of the, the village uh, with winding streets lined with shops, cafes, historic buildings. The religious heart of Rocamador is accessible via a steep climb. And for those people that um, don't want to walk up to the top, there is a lift system that takes you right up to the main citadel, um, which is really helpful. So this is the top of the escalator that we saw before. And this is the little train that takes you from the town down to the car parks at the bottom. It is seven euros each, so you can imagine we're having to walk. We are. After a very small piche of uh, rosé. It was a very large piche of rosé. Um, luckily, luckily I drove here. So. Yes. So the main reason for visiting Cahors was to uh, visit the medieval bridge. But we were hungry, so we had to stop and have a little bite of lunch and another glass of rosé. We are at Cahors. At the cathedral, which is absolutely massive for the size of the town it is. Beautiful. So we're just coming out of the division between the medieval area in Kapoor and the modern part. You can just see the cathedral in the background. Quite a vibrant place actually, loads of restaurants. So this is the main Square in Cahors, got the tourist information centre here, here was very helpful. Lovely fountain. Here's Teddy having a well earned soaking and a drink of water. And Julie's going to go in any second now. It would be nice. Amazing, we've got this linear like, waterfall and exposed pipework. Running water all the way down from the top of the park to the bottom. And we're using fossils underground to the next level. So here we are at the Pont Balentre. And I have to say, it's as pretty as I would say most of the areas that we've seen on the Dordogne. Very clearly medieval. Oh, vineyard. This is the Pont Valentin in Cahors. Look at those little cobbled streets. We're going to walk over it anyway, and then we'll tell you more about it when we learn more about it. Pont Valentin is a stunning medieval bridge that spans the Lot River, built between 1308 and 1378. This sixth arch bridge is renowned for its three imposing 45 towers, which were originally constructed to defend against invaders. is the lower part of the approach to the chateau. So we're just walking up a very pretty cobbled and pathway towards the chateau. A milder day today so we definitely wouldn't have been here yesterday and Julie definitely wouldn't have been wearing long trousers. <laughs> so Julie Payne. 
seven euros fifty per adult and dogs are welcome. It's the entrance of the castle. So I think we'll let Julie come through. So we'll keep the drawbridge down. So this is the medieval garden, such as it is. So we're now into the grotto, which was a cave originally, that the castle was then built on and it was enlarged by men to improve storage. Masks the late Gothic style fireplace. We are now in the state room. Thankfully, we're out of the rain. I can't really tell it's been built for fortification. Yeah. Um, and you've got the well right in the centre, so that if they're under siege, they can still access a water supply. So we're now going up into the donjon or the keep, which is where the family would uh, retreat to if the outer walls or the inner walls even were breached. So we are now at the top of the keep. Probably the most impressive view. As you look down, you can imagine during the Hundred Years' War, the dreaded English rushing up the valley. So that's it, we finished the tour. Um, what did you think? Well organized. Yeah. East to follow, good English guide that described each of the 19 points. Absolutely. The keep for me was the best and being right up there. Fantastic views of the countryside. Yeah, I second that. So yeah, I was slightly underwhelmed to start with because it's a little bit rough and ready around the edges, but actually, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Highly recommend. I'd love to tell you that we had glorious weather while we stayed in the lot, but a little bit like May, it rained a lot too. Our neighbours and jeet owners, Lily and Renee, had kindly allowed us to use their Kawasaki mule to have a great adventure around the forest on the doorstep. And we had such fun. So it's eight o'clock in the morning and it's our last um, day. In fact, it's our last few minutes in the Gite. Uh, we spent the last four weeks here and obviously eight weeks in France. So quite a sad day. We're gonna have one last hurrah. We're going to a village uh, just north of where Abby and Luca live, uh, where they've got a steam engine. So we're gonna have fun with steam engines. And then our last night in France will be uh, tomorrow at the campsite. So we arrived at the train station and we we're going to catch a steam engine and Miz are very excited. And I think Julie's maybe a little bit more excited. And there we were back to the campsite with Abby, Luca and Mia for our final night and a final goodbye. 
Uh, we have had such an amazing time. So then after eight glorious weeks, it was the long drive back up to Calais, across the Eurotunnel and home.